Hey guys, um, this is the start of the second section of STAT 190 and um, we're going to walk through uh, chapter five. So let's get right to it. So um, if you remember that drawing I made uh, at the very first day of class, it kind of looked like this. And um, the idea is that, right, we start with this idea of a population and populations are, you know, a whole set of things. Um, hopefully something that we're interested in. We've collected some information about it or we're going to collect some information about it. We'll call that data once we get it. But for now, the idea that there's just a whole bunch of things and normally we think of that as people, but sometimes it's uh, products we make at the assembly line or uh, mice in our study or uh, not, not mice in our study, mice in general. And we're gonna take a subset of that population and call that a sample. And a sample is just the group that we can easily measure from. Because remember, the idea of a population is that it's either big or maybe even it's theoretical, because we're not just thinking about the products that we've made today at the factory, we're thinking about the products that we're going to make in the future. So it's not even a real, excuse me, physical population, it's a perspective population. Anyway, the first part of the class, we've been thinking about descriptive statistics, where we use the sample to just draw conclusions about the sample. So in the particular data set we have, 32% are red. Um, we can find the mean and standard deviation of certain things, and we can go um, from there. But what we want to do now is think about the more complicated parts. And there's two parts left, and on the first day I mentioned that probability is the second part of the course, and that's what we're going to be starting now. The third part of the course is inference down here, and that's cool too, but we're going to get to that in the third part of the course. Anyway, the idea of probability is we're going to take our population and using mathematics and using assumptions, we're gonna use probability to try to draw conclusions about what a sample from a population might look like. Now, compared to other um, things that we do in the class, this is gonna be a lot more math heavy. And in fact, probability is actually a branch of mathematics. Inference uses mathematics and descriptive statistics used arithmetic and mathematics, but probability really is taking assumptions and getting to conclusions. So a lot more like what you did in geometry class, if you remember back to there, than uh, what we do in science. And I think we talked before about how um, statistics really does bring together the ideas of math and the ideas of science. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say under certain conditions, under certain assumptions, what can we conclude about a potential sample? Now to do that means that we understand the population. And as a result, we're going to often have very simple populations that we're going to study. So instead of thinking about all the people uh, in the United States or all the products our assembly line might make, we might instead think about much smaller things like decks of cards or dice or uh, things where not only are they small, but they're organized. You know, a deck of cards has 52 cards, four suits of 13 cards. A dice has six sides, um, you know, with one of the, each of the numbers on it. Um, and we'll make conclusions about that, that each card is equally likely to be drawn, or when we roll a die, uh, the same, uh, each side has an equal probability of being selected. So that's really what we're gonna think about here in this next part of the course. All right, so getting into uh, the ideas themselves, right? Again, chapter five starts with the simple rules of probability. And again, you can argue over how simple they might actually be, but the idea that we're going to be um, building from these simple things into more complicated things. So um, the first thing uh, that we want to think about is the idea of what probability even means. And a probability we simply think about as the proportion that something happens. So if I flip a coin, there's a 50% chance it comes up heads. Um, the, uh, if I draw from a deck of cards, you know, there's a one in four chance that I draw a spade, um, anything like that. And again, we're going to eventually get to really big populations to think about, oh, from the sample of Truman, the population of Truman students, if I draw a sample of 35 students, how many women, how many men, how many seniors, uh, how many students of color, whatever it is we're interested in, can we draw or can we expect to find from that? Um, how many voters? Um, anything like that. So uh, we're going to use some terminology. Um, an outcome is just what we call the space. Um, the sample space, which the book uses a capital kind of squiggly S uh, to mark, uh, that's the 
possible outcomes. We often write this as a set of events. So each of the outcomes can be combined to make events. So rather than thinking about individual outcomes, we can think about sets of outcomes that do that. Um, so for instance, if we're gonna roll a simple die, um, the sample space are all six um, outcomes on the die. And again, dice are handy because they're all marked uh, very nicely for us. But we could say a simple event would be roll a one. And the probability of that is gonna be one sixth. I'm getting ahead of slide, but I bet you figured that out. We could talk about rolling even, two, four, six, right? There's three of the six outcomes for there. And if we go, you know, one step further, we can do the same thing for a deck of cards. Again, now there's going to be 52 outcomes in our sample space. And again, you can imagine real sample spaces, all the students at Truman, all the voters um, in the United States. <clears throat> again, all the products, our assembly line makes whatever. But we're going to mainly focus on these simpler ones because, again, writing 52 decks or 52 uh, cards is annoying enough without imagining uh, writing, you know, 150 million voters or whatever. So um, we're going to use some notation. Uh, this P of A notation, this is a function. So again, imagining how you think about uh, algebraic notation. The probability of A is the probability that A happens. So um, probabilities can be written in lots of forms, um, right? So you can imagine, right, if something happens one quarter of the time, we could write that as 0.25 or one quarter or 25%. Now, there's some basic things that happen in probability. All probabilities are between zero and one, between zero and 100%. Your deodorant can give 110%, but you can, um, not in probability anyway. All uh, individual probabilities are always between zero and one. But more importantly, the sum of all of the outcomes for a particular activity have to equal one. So if we want to think about that more formally, then if we add them up, we could do the sum sign if we wanted. If we add them up, it's going to come out to be exactly one. So um, that's kind of the basic rules. If you ever add up your probabilities and add up to something more than one, you've done it wrong. If you ever have a negative probability, you've done something uh, wrong as well. Um, and um, from there, we will sometimes say that a thing with probability zero is what we call impossible. Something with probability one is certain. Something where the probability is teeny, teeny, tiny, not actually zero, but close to zero, we say is statistically impossible or practically impossible. So even though we know someone wins the lottery sometimes, the chance of you winning the lottery is pretty much impossible. How small is small enough? That really depends. So again, it's not like a formal limit or a formal mathematical rule. Yeah, no, and it depends on what the outcome is. If we're saying, uh, what's the probability I can jump out of an airplane without a parachute? Now, the probability is actually like 4%, which is actually better than you might think. But I'm going to say it's statistically impossible anyway, because I really think it's a bad idea. Now, probability can get um, more complicated than that. But at its simplest, that's how we think about it. When we interpret these numbers, there's really three different ways that we think about it. One is an empirical probability, which is the idea that we actually watched it a whole bunch of times. So the idea that the probability is the relative frequency. So I rolled my die 100 times. How many times did I get a one? Well, I can do that and calculate the exact sample probability of that. The empirical probability is based off real data. The classical idea is based off of assumptions. So again, if I assume that my dice is fair, then if I roll the die 100 times, I would expect one sixth of them to come out with a one, regardless of what actually happened. And we know if we do the empirical probability, we would get different answers each time. But with the classical method, we would get it about the same. There's also an idea of subjective probability. And subjective probability is one of those things where you don't really use math at all. You just go, oh, I feel like that happens about a quarter of the time. And people will say, well, gosh, that's not math. That's not statistics. And kind of, you're right, it's not. But to say that that's not a thing is not really true. And we don't really want to um, downplay that because often those subjective probabilities are based off of sort of intuitive things that have happened over a lot of time. Um, I, I think I've mentioned that I went to engineering school and there are a ton of uh, examples where the guy who worked on the assembly line floor um, who had very little education, certainly didn't understand mathematics very well, he would tell the engineers things and the engineers wouldn't listen to them. But when it got down to it, his subjective probability 
was better than either the evidence that they had collected or the assumption based numbers that they had had. So again, while we like to imagine that subjective uh, probabilities are crap, right, you really shouldn't use them. In practice, I think you ignore them at your peril. And so the question is, what are you going to do with that? And, you know, certainly, you know, we think about luck, we think about people making guesses, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, Babe Ruth pointing at the where he's going to hit the home run. I mean, that's all cool, but you don't want to just base it on that. So again, in this class, we're going to not really think about subjective probabilities, but to say that they're useless is totally not true. And so I don't want you to think about, um, you know, just totally throwing them out into the trash can, even though in this class, we're going to kind of do that. Okay, so um, again, <coughs> we could work out uh, problems in the two different ways. We could build a model using mathematics, or we can collect evidence. And ideally, we're going to bring the two of those together somewhere in there. So imagine if we had 500 families and each of them had three children, and we found that 180 of the families had two boys and one girl. We could estimate the probability of that, right? That's 180 out of 500. That's 36 percent. But we could also compute it using uh, one of our assumptions, like assuming that men, boys and girls are equally likely being born, how could we work out the probability of that? Often we'll use what's called a probability tree when we do that. And the book has a lot of examples. And when you get into the homework, it'll have uh, pictures of these. But the idea is, right, our first one comes out and we have a first baby and it's either a boy or it's a girl. And then the second one comes, and again, now we have a boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, boy. And when we get to the bottom, you can see that three of the out eight outcomes are there. So three of the eight outcomes are uh, two boys and a girl. So that's three eighths, 37 and a half percent. That's actually, you know, 36 percent is what our data showed, right out of 500 multiply. Um, but Right, which of those is more accurate? Well, the data is the data. So in a way, the 36% is better. But again, since we're trying to think about the potential for future cases, that 37 and a half is more mathematically accurate if the assumption of equally likely births is true. <clears throat> okay, so we can work it out either way. So again, 36% here or 37 and a half percent here. Right, and again, Psychologically, we could think of other things subjectively. Um, certainly, we know that a lot of families with a lot of boys and then a girl is an example where a family wanted to have a girl, so they kept having children until they had one and those sorts of things. But that gets really complicated and again, not what we're doing in this course. So this idea of either doing the empirical method where we look at data or we do the classical method where we think about some assumptions and we go from there. Um, those are the two different techniques we're going to be using in the class. All right, um, 5.2 starts in a second, and that will be a separate video.